Hey everybody. Today we're going to do um, a tutorial on how to make the free flap wallet pattern that we have available on Weaver Leather's website. Uh, we've done a video just kind of making it, but a lot of people like the tutorials, so we're going to talk you through. Um, it's pretty simple. It's only a couple pieces. I've cut a version of the pattern out. You have two options with the strap. You can do a curved strap or a straight strap. And uh, we'll just get into it. This is a fairly simple pattern. It doesn't use a lot of leather, which I like. Um, maybe half a square foot to a foot. I'm just using sort of the end of a, of a hide that would pretty much be scrap for anything else. It's about three and a half, four ounces. Um, so we're just gonna trace this out and go through putting it together. So one quick thing when cutting out this pattern, um, this piece kind of bends over and wraps around and it has these little um, corners. What I like to do is um, I trace it out, but I'm going to punch little holes here before I cut it. And what that's going to do is, and I'm punching right at the, right at the point here before I cut these curves. And what that's going to do is instead of just cutting this out and having, it's kind of, it's really, really hard to get a nice clean cut here. You don't want anything to rip over time. So by punching a hole, you're basically making this cut do a little, almost turnaround circle. And I've found um, in making designs like this where you're folding this over, there's a lot of tension right here once it's all stitched up. That just prevents any, um, any ripping or tearing that might happen if you're using kind of a hide that's a little dry or old or whatever. Uh, it's just a little safety precaution. So once I have these holes punched, I'm just going to cut these curves out and we're pretty much done with the cutting. Once we have all of our pieces cut out, um, we're going to do a little bit of burnishing before we put everything together because the next step is pretty much just gluing everything together. I'm going to burnish the tops of the pockets. I'm not going to burnish the sides and I'm not going to burnish anything on the flat piece because um, when we put it together, then we can sand everything down even and then we can burnish it all at once. And then I also went ahead and branded my strap with my logo. If you have a logo that kind of the shape fits there, you can brand there. You can also brand like on the back because um, this is going to go together like this. So you could do a brand on the back or you could do, you know, you could do a monogram on the flap. There's a lot of cool options for little brand hits here and there in this design. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to burnish up the pocket tops because we won't be able to get to those once this is glued up. And then we're, we're gluing basically. So the next step, we're gonna glue basically everything all in one go. So I'm just gonna mark uh, where the top is going here. And you can kind of see this is curved, but then it's cut off to allow for the bulk of this folding under. So you're not gonna be butted up kind of right in the center. It's gonna be about, you know, an eighth of an inch off. So make sure to account for that so that you can fold everything together. And then we're just gonna glue all of it. So we're gonna glue both sides of this and I'm just going to rest it, prop it up here so it can dry. And we'll glue down here and then we're just going to glue a little bit of our tabs. Um, we'll mark our tabs after we do have to glue the tab spot on the front of this after we put this all together. Once we have this glued together, um, I cleaned up the edges a bit, a little bit of sandpaper. And before I glue the strap in, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna lay out my stitches. I'm not gonna punch all the way through, but I'm just gonna lay out my stitches so that I can make sure that when I glue this strap in, I'm not gonna land like on a stitch. I'm gonna, I can kind of glue it in between stitches so that everything lays out nicely. The stitch overlaps and doesn't kind of split a seam anywhere. So to do that, I'm just gonna lay out my stitch line on the front. 
and then I'm going to use, I'm using the 5mm stitching chisels from Weaver. And I'm just going to mark them, I'm not going to punch through. Just so I can see, and you don't have to do it all, um, you can just go down a bit because our strap's going to land like in here somewhere. And that way, when I glue everything in, or when I glue the strap in, so now I know that I can glue... That'll get me in between two stitch holes. So I'm just going to take my awl, and I'm going to do a light mark here, and here. And now I know that's where I can glue in between these two marks, and the strap will go in, and it won't be, it'll be spaced evenly. Um, you don't want to put this strap too far down there. You can put it wherever you want, but you just want to make sure that you're putting it in a place that it's going to catch. If you put it too low, you don't want it kind of sitting like that. You want it sitting right in the middle here. You also don't want it too high um, because the width of the flap just won't allow it to go all the way in. So I'm doing it um, about an inch down on either side. And now we'll just put a little bit of glue and get this whole thing glued together. And um, once you have everything sewn up, uh, we're just gonna take care of the edges really quick. And we'll give these a burnish, and then I'm gonna show you how we, how you can, if you're working with, this is Herman Oak Natural Veg Tan. Um, if you wanna kinda start it off, do a little bit of oiling and conditioning, I'll show you how we generally do that. Since natural veg tan doesn't have any oils or dyes or anything applied to it, you might want to condition it to kind of protect it before you use it. You can also tan this in the sun. It tans like skin. It'll get a little bit darker. Um, we're not going to tan it, but I am going to condition it to go through kind of some stuff that you can use. We're going to use from Phoebing's mink oil, the liquid stuff, and their Aussie paste wax, or leather conditioner. It's basically paste wax with some Neatsfoot oil in it. Mink oil... Um, a lot, there are a lot of pastes that have mink oil in it. Just make sure you don't have a lot of, you're not using something with some synth, a lot of synthetics in it. Because it'll just basically prevent, I've, I've seen, I forget what the brand is, but I've seen some like shoe stuff that's used on natural veg tan and it just prevents it from patinaing. It's the most bizarre thing. It just stays kind of like a pale color for years. So make sure you're using like a pure mink oil or a paste with mink oil in it that doesn't have a lot of synthetics in it. So we're gonna start with the mink oil first. Um, and when you're using this, you don't wanna, you don't have to go super light on it. You can kinda, you know, let it soak in. Um, you don't wanna totally drench it. But I just like to use a paper towel. Um, usually use one of those fancier ones that kinda of feel more like a towel than a paper towel. They just seem to last a little bit longer. They don't rip while you're doing this. And you'll see how it's not soaking in here. That's where the some of the gum drag got. Um, It'll even out over time, and the, all, the color, once it dries, will be more uniform. But with any natural veg tan product, it is going to look kind of strange before it is used. Um, once it starts to patina and the color evens out, then it'll start to look really nice. And so you want to make sure you get under the strap. And if you get a little bit on the, um, the fiber, don't worry about it, it'll dry up. Or you can just oil the whole fiber side. I usually don't. But you can see where like 
we burnished or it got some wax on it, it'll eventually sink in. You just gotta give it some time. And I'm gonna do like one and a half coats. I'm not gonna go too crazy with it. And you can, if you wanna go all the way down in the pocket, you can as well. I'm just gonna kinda do as far as my hand, my, I can get in there with my hand. And then we're just gonna let it dry for a little bit. So we'll let it dry for maybe 15, 20 minutes. I'll put it out in the sun and that'll get nice and dry. And you can also do the edges too, even though you've already sealed them. Just a little added protection. And once this is dried, you can see everything evens out. And this will all even out further. Um, it's only been about 15 minutes, but all of those little marks and stuff on the edges and stuff, it soaks in and your color gets nice and even. So the next thing we're gonna do is hit it with um, the Phoebing's Aussie Leather Conditioner. And this has, this is more of like a wax paste. I use my fingers for this because I like to kind of massage it in. Um, but if you wanna use like a, a rag or something, you can do that too. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go pretty heavy with it because we're gonna wipe most of it off. But I like to really get it in there and then I let it sit for a while and let it kind of soak in, I guess. Um, if you're in a very cold room, this stuff will be, you might have to heat, warm this up a little bit so that it's spreadable because it will, because it's got wax in it, it will, when it's cold, it's, it's hard to spread. Um, so I like to make sure it's about, you know, a little more, a little less than chapstick consistency, a little more spreadable than that. And I'll go in and I'll kind of work it around for a little while. And then I'll let this sit for about 20 minutes. And then we'll just go in with a rag and we'll clean it off, kind of buff it a little bit, hit it with a horsehair brush and it'll be ready to use. And here we go. So this isn't quite dry yet, which is why it's a little spotty. Um, let it dry overnight and it'll be nice even color. And this little design is nice. It's got, you know, two pockets. I like it because it has a an all leather. It's all leather, but it's still got a nice closure. Um, and these age really nice. You get a, a nice strip of, if you do them in natural veg tan and other leathers that patina darker, you get a nice strip right here. Um, so you can kind of slide it up and see how much the leather's changed. And overall, they're a nice, simple project that um, doesn't use a lot of leather. And it's fun to make. So remember, you can get this pattern free. It's in the first link in the description on Weaver's website. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.